Hello Legends, good to see you all here today. Thanks for tuning in for today's video. We'll be looking at Palantir, ticker symbol PLTR. Now this company has gained a lot of attention from the media lately. Now let's take a deep look and go beyond the smoke screen to learn more about it. Now in this video, I'll be covering six major aspects. Number one, what does the company do? Number two, revenue streams. Number three, market size and opportunity. Number four, potential risk and competitions. Number five, financials. Number six, valuation and my final thoughts. So let's get ready for a ride. Big disclaimer, I currently own Palantir shares at this time of recording. Now, what does a company do? To clear the air out, unlike Amazon AWS or Oracle or Snowflake, Palantir is not a data warehouse company. Palantir builds softwares to help clients retrieve multiple streams of data and analyze them using algorithms at speed. Here's a simpler analogy for you. Imagine now you're Bruce Wayne. You're busy running a Wayne tech business enterprise. Plus your Batman suit designs are not done yet. Wouldn't it be great that you have a personal assistant that can instantaneously suggest solutions for your Batman suit designs? Now think of Palantir this way, it can actually pull data from your combat pattern data, your weapon armor preferences data and so on to suggest a design solution for your Batman suit design. So all in all, think of Palantir like a software version of Alfred with the ability to access and analyze huge sets of data in different formats in a short amount of time and integrate them to help the owners like you and I to make better decisions. Now, putting in the context of the data world, Palantir software products help retrieve data from different data warehouses such as Oracle, SAP, AWS, and so on, and help the users to find the hidden links between data points to help in faster decision making and analytics. The average normal user would find that Excel is more than enough for the day-to-day -day job. This is true, especially when the amount of data involved is probably several hundreds of megabytes or even several gigabytes. But if you have terabytes or even zettabytes of data, and if you need to perform analysis on a real-time basis, you will not want to use Excel at all. Now, another example is that the UK government's National Health Service, in short NHS, has commissioned the use of Palantir software in the effort of COVID-19 contact tracing. So Palantir, they have two primary products, Gotham, wait, not this Gotham, and Foundry. Gotham was built for analysts at defense and intelligence agencies by helping them to track hidden patterns and hidden links of terrorists and threat level, etc. It was also reported that their software was used to hunt down Osama bin Laden. Now, as for Foundry, let's take the Airbus partnership as an example. Foundry has helped almost 100 airlines and their suppliers to share and operationalize massive scale data around production, inventory, sensors, and maintenance systems, thereby integrating siloed data points to enable greater data sharing efficiency. So all in all, think about Palantir as the OS for data, like your Android OS or Apple OS or Huawei OS. Now, what are their revenue streams? They've got two major revenue segments as reported. Number one, government, where the US military department made full use of their software to help identify terrorism threats as well as the real-time combat mission resource deployment, etc. Number two, commercial. They sell the softwares to other businesses who require extensive decision making based on large data sets for real-time situations. Now, based on the latest Thank You quarterly report, it seems that the government segment attributes about two-thirds of the total revenue. In terms of revenue segment by geographical regions, unsurprisingly, the US makes up two-thirds, with the remaining one-third coming from countries such as the UK, France, and the rest of the world. Now, 
market size and opportunity. Now, market size opportunity is of paramount to investors as it gives us investors a good gauge of the potential of the company. Let's take a look at this Statista chart that shows the volume of data generated in a worldwide scale. This is to say, from 2010 to 2021, there has been a Kega growth of 40% from 2 zettabytes to 80 zettabytes of data. Now imagine 1 terabyte is equal to 50,000 trees made into paper and 1 zettabyte is equivalent to 1 billion terabytes. And so therefore, 1 zettabyte equals to 50 trillion trees made into paper. Now do that for 80 zettabytes and more. You can now imagine the scale of data we are living in today. Aside from that, the expected enterprise data volume is to be increased by 2x by the year 2022. This signals the fact that enterprises are gaining more and more data from all ends that can be utilized for greater efficiency in decision-making process. Palantir also estimated its total addressable market as $119 billion, of which $63 billion from the government or $56 billion from the commercial clients. So the key insight here is that the expected amount of data, be it generated or consumed, will be increasing moving forward. That being said, this is definitely a huge market. As the saying goes, data is the new oil and Palantir is the machine that helps companies and enterprises to refine the new oil. Do you agree with the findings? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Now be sure to give it a like and subscribe and make sure you click on the bell icon as well. Potential risks and competitors. For one, the custom-built software solutions will take a longer sales cycle to realize. Therefore, the adoption of their analytics software may take longer than usual. Execution and speed of execution risk must be monitored closely. 2. Palantir's competitors are not the database warehouse companies such as Snowflake or Oracle or Amazon AWS etc. Palantir's competitors, as highlighted by the management in the Investor Day presentation, are really the enterprises themselves. They opinion that Enterprises spend too much money and time to build custom data analytics solutions that oftentimes ended up wasting billions and billions and billions of dollars and developers' time with a negative return. Number three, the secretive nature of the industry has made several bad press headlines where people opine that Palantir has helped the government entities to exercise more and more control and spying on its citizens. This may, from time to time, disturb and put Palantir under the limelight and may also see more potential court cases if their PR team does not manage this carefully. Number 4. Peter Thiel, founder of Palantir, is a polarized figure. He was reported to have supported Trump in the 2016 election, but I wouldn't worry too much about this. Number 5. Corporate governance risk. There is a class F common shares that are owned by the senior leadership team members such as Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, and more, which collectively represent 49.99% of the voting power. However, do note that Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, and some of the senior members are notably known as the PayPal Mafia for a reason. Their execution capability has been proven through their PayPal venture. Number six, having more than 50% of the total revenue comes from government contracts does scare investors a little bit. However, in the context of the US government, the Federal Streamlining Acquisition Act, FASA, was passed in 1994. Now, in a dumbed down human language, if there's existing commercially available services in the market, the US government is obliged by law to purchase their services. Therefore, I would say that the stickiness of the contract with the government would likely remain sticky. Up next, financials. In terms of the income statement, in Q1 2021, 
they generated $341.2 million in revenue, a 49% year-over-year growth, same period of time last year. Gross profit stands at $267.1 million, representing about 78% gross margin, 83% when you exclude stock-based compensation. Now, this is a reasonable gross margin considering that this is a software tech company in which the COGS, cost of goods sold, largely consists of staff salary, stock-based compensation, benefits, third-party cloud hosting services, and so on. What's impressive here is that the average revenue per customer during the trailing 12-month period ended March 31st, 2021 was $8.1 million, which grew 29% from the $6.3 million year over year. In terms of balance sheet, as of Q1 2021, the company has got $2.6 billion in total current assets, of which $2.3 billion is its cash balance. The total current liabilities of approximately $670 million. The key insight here is that there is enough liquidity for the company for a foreseeable time. In terms of cash flow, the adjusted free cash flow increased from negative $290 million to positive $151 million. This is largely due to the inclusion of stock-based compensation. The company had been making losses since its inception 17 years ago. What? And this is the primary reason why so many investors kept bashing them. However, do bear in mind that there weren't any 10 nanometer chips or powerhouse GPUs to help power a strong machine learning process for data analytics back then. This is to say that the technology back then wasn't matured enough to help Palantir scale effectively. Valuation and my final thoughts. With the current market cap of $47 billion and a trailing 12 month revenue of $1.2 billion, it's currently trading at about 39x revenue multiple. Assuming that the company can grow its revenue about 30% year over year, which means next year the revenue would should be around $1.56 billion. Assuming a 40x revenue multiple, its market cap could be at around $62 billion next year. The company has a good track record with its clients and the necessary tech stack to help enterprises in simplifying big data analytics. To me, the valuation seems a bit high at the moment. I'll definitely wait on the sidelines to add more when the valuation lowers. The lower valuation will be attractive, assuming on the premises that A, if the senior leadership team maintains its course and vision in the big data analytics world, B, if Palantir keeps inventing new modular features on their softwares that can be offered at different prices or different tiers to different clients with different needs, C, if Palantir can continuously retain their customers and scale up the customer use case, this can be verified by looking at the number of customers over the years as well as the revenue per user, which had been increasing based on a past track record. Alright, this is just my two cents. Thank you for riding this journey with me. Make sure you smash the like button and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.